Here we are in Italy. This is Ken Brandt, and he's an artist. Hey, everybody. So this is where we are on uh, very early in the morning. Uh, we drove from uh, Pantasieve to this little township. It's called uh, Manta. Let me see if I can get it right here. Manta Meg. Nea Monta Magneo. And it's a commune in Italy and it's about 19 miles east of east of Florence and about 22 miles northwest of Arezzo. And that's where we were and it's kind of up in the mountains as you can see from uh, from uh, my setup there and it was a beautiful little commune and the people there were very nice. Um, they uh, saw that we were painting in the area and they allowed us to go in some of their um, uh, backyard areas and uh, do some painting in there as well. So uh, it was really uh, a really nice day. And at the bottom of this uh, hill where this township is, this commune they call it, um, there was a restaurant and uh, we were the only ones there for the day and uh, they served us some uh, great Italian cuisine. It was uh, really good. And uh, so this, that was uh, our morning there and this was the first painting that I did there. I ended up doing a total of, um, I want to say I did two paintings while we were there in this little uh, township. And this was the first one, and I saw the um, the view, and uh, it was just, it just captured my interest because the way the light was hitting that uh, one house, and uh, then the um, uh, the the tree in the in the foreground, and uh, there was some good shading, and uh, so I wanted to capture that. I'm not. Um, too happy with the painting itself, how it came out um, in the short period of time that I did paint that. And it, I believe it was about, I was about an hour or so uh, on this particular painting. And then the second painting that I did, which will be the next video, um, I spent a little bit longer and that was a, a, a person uh, Right to the left of me where I'm standing, there was a little home and they had a beautiful uh, yard and the sunlight was hitting it just a certain way and the woman came out and she allowed us to paint in her backyard. So that's what we did for the second painting there. And that one I was a lot more pleased with um, than this one. So this one was uh, just kind of getting myself um, warmed up. Um, I mean, this one's still still a very nice painting, and when we get it in the studio, I will be working on uh, bringing out those aspects that really drew me to this um, scenery in the first place. So that's what I'll be doing in the studio on this one. But here you can see the beginnings of this particular painting, and again, as usual, uh, the morning light, the morning sky, there was like the whole time we were there, there were like no clouds to speak of. It only rained one day the whole week we were there, and that was the only day we had clouds, and you will see those videos at a later date. And so I was able to get some good cloudage uh, in the painting, but on these, most of these mornings, there was very, no, very little clouds, if none at all, 
and uh, so it's all clear blue skies, morning blue skies, and I attack those skies the same way with every painting. I used my ultramarine blue near the top of the uh, skyline on the top of the canvas, and I worked my way down to a cooler temperature blue, the cerulean blue, uh, as it got closer to the uh, horizon, the hillsides, you know, the, the, the land um, uh, horizon there. And so that's what I did. So you can see here I'm uh, painting the hillsides with that uh, purplish color, which I did discuss in the uh, previous video, uh, how I like to um, uh, attack those uh, distant mountains or distant hillsides because you cannot see the color yellow in the distance, it fades away you know, in the light spectrum. So the color yellow is not a prominent color, so you're left with the blues and the reds. And hence you get a purplish hue to the hills in the background, and that lends itself to that atmosphere that you're trying to achieve when you're painting uh, objects in the distance. So that's what I was doing there, and um, the hill that was closer to us um, behind that house, and naturally it was a lot closer, so I wanted to uh, introduce the color yellow, and as it hits the blue, you're gonna start seeing the greens. So that, that mountain, I, uh, that hill on the side, I did think with the, uh, with the greenish uh, color to it. So yeah, we, um, Basically, we were there for um, a good part of the morning. Uh, we arrived there, I want to say we got there around 9 o'clock in the morning. And by the time we got set up, so this is a 9.30 sun that we're looking at here coming up. And it looks like it's, uh, you know, because it's, it, it's very hilly in that area. So the sun that you're seeing that's hitting that canvas right there is uh, sun that's coming up over over the top of a hill and uh, and it's uh, just touching the tops of uh, some of the houses that are a little bit lower down in front of me and that was what captured my interest on this and I really um, really like the way it looked and I was as always I'm always looking for some big contrast between the lights and the darks to uh, you know play with on the canvas and I, in the short period of time, you always try to capture the essence of that. And sometimes, sometimes you can do it really well. Sometimes, sometimes I struggle with it. Um, I'm not going to uh, pretend that uh, every single painting I do is a wonderful, awesome, unique painting that should hang in a gallery as soon as it's finished. Because most of the time, it is not. I usually have to bring it in, work on it a little bit longer and uh, achieve the effects that I'm looking for and the ones that I remember seeing on these uh, uh, plein air uh, subjects. And that's what you need to keep in mind when you're yourself or out there painting, that uh, you're not trying to achieve a masterpiece each and every time, not something that can hang in a gallery as soon as you're done with it. Not to say that you couldn't. Um, some people can achieve that. I achieve it very rarely but I do strive for it on each and every painting. And that's why, it, to me, it's always important whenever I do a painting of any kind, the canvas that I'm using, or the, uh, the canvas board, or the canvas, um, you know, if it's a, a, a framed canvas, um, a lot of times I make sure that it's the best canvas that I can use, uh, because you never know when the painting that you're working on is going to be something that's exquisite and you want to make sure it's very archival and will last forever. So I always make sure that the canvases I use are, you know, the best that I, I think are the best canvases that, that I, I can use. And this particular canvas, it's a linen, linen board on a, a one quarter inch plywood and, uh, and it's a very smooth very smooth linen, uh, almost a portraiture type grade. So the linen is very fine, and that's what I like to work with. 
I like it because my paints uh, tend to glide over the surface of the canvas a lot better and I can uh, get more detail in with a smaller brush and uh, on a smoother surface. It's, uh, when you're dealing with a rougher surface, a lot of times it's hard to get those details in there because you got these little ridges and you have to fill in with the color of the paint and that can be difficult. Not that it can't be done, it's just going to be difficult so you end up struggling with it and I do not appreciate struggling with the uh, accessories and the, you know the canvases and the brushes and the colors. I don't because you know, then it just makes for a bad painting if you have to worry about you know how things are going on. If they're not going on well, it will affect the end result of your painting. So here are, you can see on the right hand side where I was trying to capture that light, the sunlight hitting the side of that uh, building um, in front of me there. And then I was trying to properly achieve that perspective of that walkway that I was actually standing on while I was painting and it's heading down this little hill and I'm not really sure, um, well actually I am sure. <laughs> Uh, that I did not capture that perspective uh, 100%. Um, it does not, when I look at the painting itself, it does not render to a, uh, uh, a scene where the walkway is dipping down and then curving to the left. It actually looks more like a straight, like it's straight on. So when I get it in the studio, that is again something I will need to work on, on this particular painting to make sure I get that perspective where I want it to be and that's the beauty of oil paints and I say this all the time you know whatever you put on the canvas it's not going to be that way uh, forever you can always make your changes even after it dries you can always make your changes and I've shown that um, if you capture uh, or watch any of my videos of uh, the, the two that I already have up uh, from plain air to studio those paintings are dry and I make major changes to them. So if you haven't seen any of those uh, particular videos, I will make sure that I leave a link to those in the uh, section below. And um, now it would be a good time to mention that if you uh, like these videos, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe because uh, that always helps. And what also helps is you know, leave a like, leave a comment. The more comments you leave, um, I think the, the better these videos do on the analytics uh, for YouTube. At least that's what I've been told. I'm not 100% sure on that. But uh, leave a comment anyway. You know, let me know if you liked it. Let me know if there's anything in particular that you want me to uh, show you. Um, if there's something that you see me doing or color that you see me using that I don't... Uh, Particularly described very well in the video that you're watching leave me a comment and I will make sure that I mention uh, that particular technique or what I was doing or the variations of techniques that can be used to achieve those effects I don't have any problems with that uh, in fact I highly recommend that that's, that that's what you do so here I am uh, working uh, with the uh, basic colors that I brought with me for these uh, Italian landscape paintings. A lot of the buildings have the very, very similar colors. Um, yellow ochre was a very prominent color that I used throughout uh, my stay there in Italy. Uh, it was a color that seemed to be everywhere. And so a lot of the buildings that I do have uh, variations of that color throughout. And, uh, and then the roofs, of course, all the roofs seem to have these, uh, these red clay tiles. So that uh, terracotta color, um, that's another color that I used a lot, especially when there was buildings involved. Um, so those two colors I used, and for the greens, um, on this particular palette, uh, I kept my palette pretty much the same for each and every painting. Um, so for the greens, and uh, well, here what I'll do is I'll just go right across. I had titanium white. I had the um, lead yellow tin. 
and then I had the uh, cadmium yellow, and then I next to that was my yellow, uh, permanent yellow green, and and with that green. I could mix that green with my ultramarine blue or my cerulean blue and I could uh, effectively make different variations of green um, that uh, really worked well. Uh, I would use the ultramarine blue to put it to make it a warmer green and I would use the cerulean blue to make it a cooler green and uh, so I would play with those back and forth until I achieved the effect I was looking for with those colors. So yeah, I had the permanent yellow green, and then I uh, next to that I had the uh, cadmium red, and um, it was pretty much the only red that I needed uh, that I used while I was there was that cadmium red. And to achieve that terracotta color, I mixed my cadmium red, a very little bit of it, with the asphaltum. And the asphaltum is a, a brownish earth tone, and it has a Sort of a yellowish base to it. This particular asphalt one does from Richardson's. Uh, that has a yellowish base to it. And if I mix that with a touch of the cadmium red, it would give me that nice terracotta color. And then I would vary that depending on how much red or how much asphalt I put in there. Would uh, vary the uh, the range of the terracotta color that I wanted. So that's how I got those colors. So yeah, I had the uh, cadmium red, and then next to that was the uh, cerulean blue, the ultramarine blue, and my asphaltum, and then ivory black. So those were pretty much the only colors that I utilized on any of my playing of any. I, I do not recall at any time that I needed to pull out, um, like in the middle of a painting, I saw something I needed to pull out a different color. And I could, with those colors on the palette, I had my my yellows, my reds, my blues, and uh, my white and black. And with those colors, I was able to mix pretty much any color that I needed. Now here I'm putting on the, um, uh, I'm working on the, the uh, walkway in front of me, but you'll see that I used, I was putting uh, the highlights on that tree um, as the sun's, because as the sun's coming across and hitting the top of that building, uh, some of that sun was also hitting the top of that tree, and so I had some highlight areas there, and that's where I went with the permanent yellow green, and then the more yellow I added to it, the more uh, brighter that could make that green, and I used that for my highlight color on my green, and that really worked out well. Uh, the rest of that area on the right, uh, being in the shade as it was. Um, I think that's where I, I probably ran into some difficulty um, putting in the proper values that I wanted in there. I believe I got the highlight areas, uh, the building and the tree a uh, pretty decent value, but uh, some of the colors on the left, I think I was off on my values a little bit there. And again, I'm not going to blame my uh, the sunlight, but here I have the sunlight directly hitting the canvas, and that is just not ideal. But in order for me to see that view, I had to be facing in that direction. Um, I could, I probably could have turned it uh, another way, but then I would have been just in an awkward position to paint. So this was the best position for me to be painting in. Uh, unfortunately, the sunlight was directly hitting the canvas, and what ends up happening, and it did happen with this, is you end up with a very dark painting in the end because you're trying to compensate for that bright light that's hitting the canvas so you end up with just a a darker color painting at the at the end of it but when we bring that in the studio we will lighten that up and uh make it uh you know make it look the best we can to make it you know for because uh, eventually these uh paintings they're all going to be sold and uh, so yeah this one's available and will be for sale and I will make sure that those are all posted on Instagram and let you know that those are for sale as each one gets done in the studio they will be up for sale and uh, available for anybody to uh, acquire um, just give me a call and uh, we'll discuss a price and um, you know these we'll find new homes for these uh, I, I would be very happy to see these in uh, uh, 
in a new home that uh, really appreciates the, the Tuscany uh, scenery that we painted while we were there. So yeah, uh, there. Uh, I uh, hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.